So welcome everyone. My name is Miranda Stiers. I use they, them pronouns. I am joining from Nisanon, Miwok, and Medu lands in what is known as Sacramento. And uh, I'm the prevention manager with the partnership. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to give folks on my team a moment to introduce themselves. Um, so let's pop one on over to Kimmy. Hi everyone, I'm Kimmy Remus, she, her pronouns. I'm a prevention specialist at the partnership um, and I'm calling from Susquehannock, Piscataue and Nintego land. And I'm gonna popcorn it to Melody. Thanks Kimmy, hi everybody. My name is Melody Chris Bowden. I am also a prevention specialist with the partnership um, and I'm zooming in from Tongva land in Los Angeles. Put on over to Jessica. And give our comms team a moment to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, thanks for welcoming me to the PPN webinar. Uh, my name is Jessica Merrill. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And uh, I'm calling from the Confederated Villages of Lishan and the lands of the Ohlone and Malakma people. I'll uh, pass it over to my teammate Michelle. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle. I use um, she, her pronouns. I'm the one of the communication coordinators at the partnership and I'm calling in from the Walkman today. And then Megan. Mm -hmm. Oh, Megan's not on. All right, uh, back to Miranda. All right, thank you so much. And um, on the screen, you'll see the control panel. So you should have the options. You won't see the breakout rooms, um, but you, if you're having any trouble with uh, audio, then please click on that piece. And I am making sure that the subtitles are on. Yes, they are, perfect. So we have chat um, or the closed captioning, which is available if you wanna see who is here for the webinar, you can absolutely click on the participant side panel. Um, you can chat either to us directly or to the group as a whole. And uh, feel free to use the reactions. And we do have ASL interpreters. So I would just try to, uh, I would encourage folks if you do unmute to ask a question to be mindful of the speed at which you speak. Um, I will, I say that so that I can also remind myself uh, we want to get a sense of who is here. So this morning we're going to be doing an opening circle and then we will be diving into Domestic Violence Awareness Month and that, that will be all of our comms team. I want to always start us with um, acknowledgement that we are on the traditional territory and homelands of California Native people. And as we have put the link in the chat for folks to know whose land you're on. We would encourage you to later on, take a look and, and start learning something about those people whose lands we're living on um, and being mindful of that in engaging in this practice of acknowledging the land in which you're living. And we would encourage folks, um, Type in the chat, let us know your name, your pronouns, if you're comfortable sharing that, your agency location and whose land you're living on. So we'd love to get a sense of who's in the room. While folks are introducing, I am going to hand it on. There we go. And as folks are introducing, it's great to see so many folks from all over the state. And I am going to hand it on over to the comps team. All right, well, we'll just get that set up. Um, so during this, uh, we wanted to announce what we're doing for Domestic Violence Awareness Month in 2022. 
Um, and so next slide. We'll be um, talking a little bit about um, the tools that the partnership has developed for um, local programs and members uh, to use throughout the month. Um, we're, talk, we're going to talk about what we're going to do on the statewide level. Um, and then we wanted to open up a discussion about what works best for you um, in past domestic violence awareness month and what your plans are for this upcoming um, domestic violence awareness month. Okay, this is my section. Um, I just had to pay homage to one of my favorite shows, Nailed It Here. <laughs> um, you know, raise your hand if you also love that show or like <laughs> talk about it in the chat. Anyway, I just wanna start off on a lighthearted note because to me, Deviant has been a journey. Um, I started out making many fabulous flops with uh, my DVAM campaigns and as uh, the comms team started expanding, my, my learning and my level of nuance started also expanding, um, you know, with DVAM. And so it's really been the collaboration that has helped improve my knowledge and, um, and our overall approach here. And I'll start. Um, so one of my fabulous flops with DVAM is one year we did a, like a get out the vote campaign. And um, it also focused on sending gubernatorial candidates um, questionnaires to ask about what their plans were to address domestic violence. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. Like, we're really going to send them like tough questions and they're going to be compelled to answer. No. Um, <laughs> I followed up, I don't know how many times. And um, it was actually my colleague on the uh, policy team, Christine, who was like, yeah, you know, you're not a 501c4. So, you know, we, we can't endorse or we, you know, we can't actually um, provide funding to particular campaigns where a 501c3. So actually they're just not gonna answer your questionnaire at all. <laughs> and so I felt like I had spent so much time working on this and, and yet um, it was for naught, but that's okay. At least I learned about the differences between 501c3s and 501c4s. <laughs> so I wanna just open it up to everyone else. What is your fabulous flop for DVAM? or anything you've learned where you're like, eh, that didn't quite work out. I'm gonna try something different next year. So when I used to work at a local program for um, DVAM, we had this plan to do, and this was like at the beginning of COVID. Um, actually, I think this was for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, we were trying to do like participatory actions that everyone could take where they post on social media. Um, and uh, yeah, no one participate, participated and we barely got staff to participate. <laughs> Um, so that wasn't great, but we did get an intern to participate and her post, um, got like thousands of views. So that worked out well. Um, but I think she was the only one. <laughs> Silver lining though, right? Like one of, uh, um, our yeah. colleagues, Diane always talks about, um, what is it? Outcomes versus impact. And I feel like that, that interns really high engagement on, on their post um was a really cool you know piece of impact that impact you know impacted that person's learning and many other people on social media so silver lining i guess yeah <laughs> yeah any other fabulous flops that folks want to share Okay, well, if uh, anything comes up, feel free to put it in the chat. And I will uh, pass it back to Michelle, I believe. Yes. 
Great. So um, this year, uh, we really want to focus on, um, you know, what would be most effective for the partnership and what would be most impactful um, and what would be useful to you all. And so we put out a Domestic Violence Awareness Month survey about two months ago. Um, and some of the results that we got was that um, y'all wanted pre-made general posts that are interactive and you especially wanted ones that connected um, uh, domestic violence to social justice issues because local programs have the red flag and the, um, you know, how to spot signs of DV kind of stuff. Um, all those posts, they had them covered. Um, so we wanted to focus on those kinds of posts. Um, a lot of people wanted to, uh, templates on how to connect to community leaders. Um, and then we got some specific requests to share the campaign as early as possible. Um, and yeah, we learned that a lot of y'all start planning for Domestic Violence Awareness Month in July. <laughs> so um, we're working on it. Um, and then this year's we'll be trying to get out as soon as possible. Um, and then we had a couple people comment that they uh, wanted a specific contact for technical assistance. So here it is. If you want technical assistance um, or to bounce ideas off of someone or to figure out how to um, plan your campaign, you can email Jess um, at jessica at cpedv.org. Next slide. Um, and also part of the Domestic Violence Awareness Month survey was the uh, popular co topics you want covered. Um, and so we had everyone rank um, the topics. And so the top five were prevention, homelessness, gun violence, abortion access, and holistic responses to domestic violence. Um, let's see. Uh, so um, our full kit this year will be launching mid-September, although when we get pieces um, done sooner, we'll be sending it to your emails um, through um, the listserv, and then uh, we will also be posting it onto our website, so you'll be able to access something before it, we're done fully in mid-September. Um, so right now um, we have a sample domestic violence awareness month resolution um, for you to modify and pass in your local community. Um, yes, uh, Megan, would you be able to uh, put the post to that in um, the chat? Um, it's on our main domestic violence awareness month page for this year. Um, we will also have um, a templates um, for you to uh, share with your leaders at the start of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, um, as well as one for Purple Day for y'all to encourage them um, to wear purple and post uh, facts about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and encourage them to talk about prevention, um, as well as um, actions we can all take and how domestic violence ties to social justice issues. Um, we will also be providing media guides so you know how to pitch stories and impress and invite press to your DVAM events. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Um, in order to plan for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, um, if you want to use our toolkit, uh, here's what we recommend. So. Um, the National Network to End Domestic Violence is um, doing a Give for DV campaign. So, um, yes, uh, exactly, Katie. Um, so, NNEDV, um, yeah, has put out this toolkit. Um, so, sign up um, and you can put a bunch of information about what your organization is doing. And then um, there's a few days of the year where they're really going to be pushing that everyone should be donating to domestic violence causes. Um, so you can sign up for that right now. Um, in early September, um, this is about the time that you should reach out to local lawmakers and ask them about passing a domestic violence awareness month resolution. 
Um, and so uh, we already have that going on the statewide level. Um, and then um, on the local level, a lot of people like to do that with their uh, school board. Um, and then mid-September, um, we'll be putting out a template about how to um, email your local leaders um, and um, to encourage them to talk about domestic violence when October begins. And we'll be talking about, um, in the template will be like how we prefer them to frame the issue. So instead of um, including, uh, you know, statistics about how prevalent it is, although that's very important, um, you know, we really wanted to um, encourage community leaders to really start talking about prevention, or at least, you know, have local programs send them an email about that so that we start planting um, those seeds in their mind about it being preventable. Michelle, can I ask you a little favor? Could you go back? I want to just take a screenshot of that website. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Um, and then we'll have um, links at the end as well. Um, so um, a big part of um, uh, domestic violence awareness month during COVID, um, especially, is how to post on social media to get um, your supporters uh, to talk about DVAM. Um, and so, uh, let's see, um, what y'all will start be, uh, so, um, what we're providing this year is um, four videos, um, no, or four videos um, tying domestic violence to social justice issues. Um, so one video will be about domestic violence and homelessness, um, and we'll have someone talk about um, actions that everyday people can take to be more proactive about um, domestic violence uh, and homelessness, um, you know, as well as talk about the ties of domestic violence and homelessness. Um, another video will be about gun violence and domestic violence. So again, um, the way those two tie together, um, as well as actions that everyone can take. And then we'll have a third video, which will be about um, prevention and domestic violence. And yes, we will be sharing these slides and posting um, the links and stuff um, on the resources page. Um, so um, once we launch those videos uh, before mid-September, you can download them, schedule them onto your social media. Um, and then um, here are some recommended posts. Um, we recommend sharing on September 30th or around the beginning of October, the services that your program offers. Um, um, Let's see. Uh, so people will likely be coming to your social media page all month for Domestic Violence Awareness Month um, and will likely want to share information about what y'all do and um, how to access your services. And so um, this is a post that you should create that has your branding and, you know, the way that you want your services to be advertised. Um, yeah, and do it at the beginning of the month, but front and center, whenever anyone comes to your page, um, it's, yeah, right at the beginning. And then um, you can now pin posts to the top of Instagram and Twitter. So we recommend doing that. Um, and that'll likely be a post that gets a lot of interaction. Um, on October 1st, uh, we'll provide a sample post um, with facts and information about domestic violence, um, you know, which are free to modify, um, but we'll be kind of leaning into the prevention aspect of um, domestic violence. Um, and then on October 20th, um, we're going to be providing a template for you um, on with a graphic uh, about Purple Day. Um, and then October 19th, I know this is a bit out of order, but October 19th is um, the Give for Domestic Violence Day. And so on that day, you should really be posting about all the amazing work that you've been doing in your community um, and then use uh, the give for DV day hashtag. Um, yeah, uh, so um, 
now I have a question for all of you. Um, what other kinds of posts are you preparing for Domestic Violence Awareness Month? And do you have any wisdom to share? Oh, yes, creating posts in Spanish as well. Um, yeah, it's a great idea to access those other communities. Um, I used to work for an Asian culturally responsive program, a couple of them. And so we used to um, post, um, depending on what our theme was, um, uh, our domestic violence awareness month graphic in like 10 different um, languages uh, that were most popular among our um, uh, clients. And then it, it got a lot of our community members to interact because, um, yeah, it's not very specific to their community um, and they would repost it. The Chico State, oh, flowers on the creek. Alexis, do you want to talk more about that? Um, Katie doing a t-shirt fundraiser, still building t-shirts, but we will be focusing on everyone knows someone. Okay, cool. Uh, Josita, oh, a, a group, a video series we created with Stanford Health about COVID and domestic violence. Oh, I'm going to have to watch that after this. Oh, and then Josita, light up City Hall. Yeah, how did that partnership start up? I'm assuming they light up uh, the city hall with purple. Uh, yes, they do. They light up uh, city hall in purple. There will be a resource fair, and uh, all the local agencies are um, participating in it as well. So we have W the Y W C A uh, Community Solutions, other organizations that uh, work with uh, DV survivors. Um, how did that partnership begin? Uh, I'm actually not the one who organizes that, so I don't have uh, all the details for that. Sorry. Oh, okay. If you like, I can yeah, connect I'm you curious. with my um, director of development. She has all the details on that. So if you want, I can okay. connect you offline. Yeah, that would be cool. Does anyone else um, convince their city hall to light up uh, a different color? I know it's quite popular during, especially like Pride Month, but um, that's cool, the purple. The Blue Shield is planning a digital campaign uh, with a dedicated website focused on healing prevention. Okay. Um, right, San Leandro is doing resolutions and good support from cities, yeah. City Council, okay. Tabling events throughout all the hospitals. Oh, lit up their uh, city, lit up their water tower. And the other lit up the clock tower purple in their city. Oh, wow. Excellent. Um, and then let's see, oh, I have some wisdom to share. Um, so as you're creating the posts, um, I recommend um, 
using local hashtags instead of the big like domestic violence awareness month ones or um, domestic violence survivor ones because your posts are likely to get lost um, and it's good to mix in some of the bigger ones but um, right as local programs the goal is to get local people to the eyes of your social media so um, since I'm in Sacramento I used to use ones like women of Sacramento, um, feminists of Sacramento, um, Scout Sacramento, Sacktown, stuff like that. Um, and that would get a lot of local eyes on our program. Plus they were smaller hashtags, so we would rise to the top of those. Ooh, coffee sleeves. Yes, those are very popular. Okay, uh, Jeff, next slide. Um, so during the month of October, oh, sorry, Megan, this is your slide, sorry. Yes, so uh, during October, um, uh, our recommendations are if you um, are, do get some uh, media uh, outreach to you. Um, this is, um, we've actually seen surveys where this is the most popular time that domestic violence is covered in um, <clears throat> media. So if your local papers or, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, media outlets are um, reaching out to you, um, we recommend utilizing the media advocacy uh, guidebook. And we've shared that before and can share it again after this um, to really uh, uh, find some best practices that will work for you and the type of interview that you would be working on. There's some um, sections in there that, you know, talk about print interviews versus on-camera interviews, et cetera, and really figuring out um, what your key uh, uh, messages are about. Um, we obviously recommend, um, since this is um, a prevention peer network, talking about prevention and um, uh, how that connects to domestic violence and how important that is um, to this month. Um, we also recommend um, speaking about the, sorry, my notes are all smushed, um, the things that individuals can do um, uh, at a small level to get plugged into the movement, whether it's volunteering with you, um, whether it's small things like learning some warning signs and those general education posts um, that are really, this is the time that they'll get seen the most. So, you know, brush up on some of that educational content that perhaps you already have in your, um, you know, past archives, but pull it back up, um, make it a little bit DVAM themed and um, try to, again, use some of those strategies that Michelle talked about. So it gets as much uh, visibility during this month in your area as possible. Um, and as Michelle said, you know, also uplift, you know, your services, how to get in touch with uh, your hotlines, things like that. Um, and some other topic ideas are talking about healthy relationships um, and learning how to respond to a survivor as, you know, if somebody comes forward to you. Um, so these very generalized educational topics um, will get a lot of visibility and hopefully, um, make a lot of change in your communities. Um, some topics that we're anticipating may or may not come up during the month of October. Um, not sure if everybody has heard that there is a documentary on Gabby Petito that is uh, coming out soon. So keep an eye out on that and perhaps um, uh, that can, uh, that had already when um, that event happened last year, garnered a lot of immediate attention. So. Um, you know, just keep an eye out for it if there are folks um, in the media space that are coming to you. Um, and again, we'll share a guide um, on some of those best practices. Uh, pitching a story to local journalists about DVAM, this is the time to do it. <laughs> um, and again, some of those best practices and developing a pitch um, can be found um, in our guide that we'll share, um, but also we'll share a template for pitching. Um, and this is really identifying um, someone in here in your area who has done great nuanced coverage um, 
around domestic violence uh, who has reported on more than just a tra tragedy. Um, sometimes these folks will have uh, beats around um, health care uh, or health. Um, sometimes it's, it's rare to have like a social justice um, sort of lens, but um, there are, you know, some people uh, sometimes, especially like in some of the larger uh, cities um, in San Francisco and LA that I believe are doing um, some of these more solutions uh, based uh, um, reporting. Um, and I think even Sacramento Bee has something called like an equity lab. So yeah, just take a browse on your local media websites. Um, what um, like sections, like they'll tell you at the top, uh, the different sections of their paper, paper, everything's digital now. Um, and then, or what I like to do even is go onto their websites, search domestic violence and see which um, journalists continually come up in their articles and see which ones are reporting in a way that's, you know, not just talking about crimes and individuals and really talking about like, what can we do to prevent domestic violence? Um, Inviting local media to your public DVM events. So things like the, uh, you know, the lighting up the city hall or your walks or um, <clears throat> anything that has like a specific time and date and you're debuting it is great to get some media coverage. Um, uh, this will require you sending out a media advisory, which we can send a template out for. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, uh, yeah, you will just fill in that template and have some basic contact information of who is your press contact um, and why it's important to give coverage to that event. If it's a um, uh, like a, a news video sort of outlet, usually they'll be up to the last minute. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of based on availability. If nothing breaking is happening and they need to like fill some time, they'll definitely want um, to have. <clears throat> something like that on uh, their books, just, you know, just in case there's a spot to fill. So go ahead and send those out um, a couple days in advance. And then you can also remind them the day of, hey, this is happening. Um, and usually that's like the newsroom or the, the news desk um, generic um, email that you'll find on their website. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so this also can apply to Purple Day and reaching out to community leaders and asking them to share about DVAM and wearing purple on that day, whether it's your mayor or, you know, <clears throat> any kind of uh, city council members. Um, they really, legislators really love to <laughs> show their support and, you know, kind of get some good practice on them. So when you are sending out these media advisories, if one of these folks is going to be showing up to one of your events, um, put that in your media advisory. That's a great kind of, um, I guess I want to be clickbait, but some kind of, you know, it's like an incentive for the uh, journalists to show up because they want to have like a prominent name that they can feature <clears throat> uh, in their pieces for DVM. So uh, any other community influencers, like some big activists in your area, uh, cultural community leaders, religious leaders would also be great to invite to these events. Um, next slide. Okay, and I think I'm handing it over to Jess for this one. Oh, I think you're on mute, Jess. Thank you, I do that like once a webinar. Um, thanks so much, Megan. So yeah, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, every year we try to get more and more responsive to what you're saying is important to your DVAM campaigns. So um, we really hope that these tools are helpful to you. Um, if you need some additional, you know, time and space to just like brainstorm, we're always really happy to meet with you. Just um, send me an email and we can, you know, think through like who are your audiences? What are your goals? Um, what are some really, um, what are some ways that you can look at your audience's values and connect them with your actions? So, you know, um, being really strategic about what you want to accomplish. And um, we always get really excited about that. So feel free to send me an email. Okay, 
Um, and I want to cover these other aspects of the campaign up to, I think, the survivor essays. And then, Megan, do you mind if I pass it along to you for the last three? Okay, great. So folks may have seen that um, Prop 1 will be on the ballot this November. And this is going to um, enshrine the legality of, constitute, of, um, of abortion access in California's constitution, no matter what the Supreme Court does. So the partnership is supporting this ballot measure. And um, at the moment, we are thinking through how we are the best partners we can be to the organizations that are already really deeply engaged in um, reproductive justice work. And so soon we'll be coming up with some, um, coming out with some information on how your organizations can also mobilize support for Prop 1 in your communities, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, also, I think Michelle touched on this earlier, but we're coming up with fact sheets that are customizable to local programs um, about domestic violence, all of the intersections, and especially prevention. So this will actually provide maybe like one or two sentences per issue area, like, um, you know, what is prevention? The importance of funding for prevention and services for survivors, um, immigration justice, what else? Um, economic justice, preventing homelessness. So these are areas where what's cool about it is it's going to be in Canva and we're gonna make this a template. So you can completely customize this. You can remove certain issue areas if you want or add others. And there will also be spaces for you to expand upon your organizations and the services that you provide as well, including your hotline and uh, who to contact to get in touch with um, folks who are leading prevention like you. So that'll be coming out soon as well. On Purple Thursday, as Michelle mentioned, we're going to be really coordinating this, um, you know, day of social media action. So posting our sample uh, tweets and posts, we'll have some sample images there, and we'll also provide that to you so that you can customize all of that. Survivor essays. This is um, a really cool thing that we actually uh, tried to uh, move along with where momentum was already being created. So Megan um, had built a really strong relationship with um, the California Health Report. And I have to say, they, they are one of the leaders in reporting on the intersections of DV and prevention. They care very deeply about um, really all of the options that survivors seek um, for justice and healing, not just ones focused on the criminal legal system. And so anyway, they got in touch with us and they said, hey, um, we'd really like to amplify some, um, you know, the voices of some survivors um, on the solutions that they would seek out uh, for some of, you know, these intersections. And we said, yeah, great. Um, they offered to pay them. They coached them through writing these essays and they published them. So there was um, a great article or sorry, great essay. Um, about teen dating violence prevention by um, Angela Kim. And also Carol Reyes wrote about um, DV and pets and the need to protect both survivors and their pets. Um, so anyway, we pitched the idea to Ethnic Media Services who we also have a great relationship with. And we said, hey, would you be willing to amplify these survivor voices for a series during DVM? Pay them, of course, for their emotional labor and time. Um, and you know, just listen to their solutions. And they said, yeah. So this is also an idea that you could you know, possibly bring to your local paper as well, um, especially if you have certain issue areas that you're really deeply focused on, like preventing gun violence or addressing homelessness. Um, and there are survivors who are comfortable working, um, sharing a little bit about their experience and also who have an existing working relationship with your organization. So something to think about. Um, anyway, those ethnic media services uh, essays should be published in October and the topics will be focused on breaking the cycle of domestic violence, um, especially in early childhood intervention and then also um, immigration justice as well. I'm gonna pass it back over to Megan. 
Thanks, Jess. So um, another part of our campaign is hosting a media briefing. Um, and we're hoping to uh, partner with um, some folks who have some really great journalist contacts um, to help host this. Um, but uh, we are focusing on the intersections of um, homelessness, uh, DV, and economic justice. Um, and we'll uh, be inviting uh, three panelists to speak for an hour um, with and answer a couple questions around some of those topics. Um, and uh, on the other side, also inviting um, as many journalists as we can get into the virtual Zoom room um, that are willing to show up um, uh, to just uh, you know, hear and learn about this topic and hopefully um, walk away with some ideas to cover this topic um, in uh, upcoming for uh, October and DVAM. So we'll be hosting it uh, mid to like end of September, hopefully, um, to allow the journalists some time to, um, you know, put those pieces together um, and get them ready to go so they're, they can launch during DVAM. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you have any journalists that you think would love to hear on, uh, that, about that topic, or you, you know, you just want some local coverage, <laughs> um, go ahead and, um, our contacts will be at the end of the presentation. If you want to, um, send me any recommendations for journalists, um, please go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll also be supporting Give for DV Day, where we'll be directing um, people who, um, you know, are trying to learn more about DVAM um, to go find their local organization and donate to all of your local programs. This is a strategy that we use quite often when it comes to fundraising um, and just, you know, uh, elevating that we're all in this together, we're all a network um, and to do uh, good at both the state and local levels. Um, and I believe this is also um, integrated into uh, NNEDV's um, campaign. And then you can correct me, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Michelle. Um, and finally, we'll be posting the same videos that we talked about earlier this month, uh, or sorry, talked about earlier with you today throughout the month of October. Um, and if it's easier for you to uh, just share the video um, and repost it from our social media channels versus going into the toolkit and, you know, copying it all over into your own um, uh, social medias, then, you know, that is fine too. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so this is just a little shout out. <laughs> uh, another part of our campaign that we have been doing for quite a while now. Um, this is the second year we're doing it for DVAM, but we have been doing it for a handful of years, I believe, um, for Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month in February, is having um, a survivor uh, be the one to actually create the uh, visuals for the campaign. So um, we are still taking submissions. The submissions close on August 31st. Um, and we're still, <laughs> we're hoping that somebody is going to submit. We still uh, haven't received any submissions yet. And just hoping people are really hard at work <laughs> uh, getting their submissions put together. But um, in a second, I'll drop a link to that application. If you all could share it with, um, your networks and let them know that this is a paid opportunity for a survivor to uh, be creative and express themselves and really um, uh, put together the visuals for an entire Domestic Violence Awareness Month campaign. Um, that would be great. Uh, and then finally, we just wanted to pass it back to you all. What are your plans for Domestic Violence Awareness Month? We've heard you go off in the chat a little bit. Um, and we talked about our fabulous flops in the beginning. Um, but uh, yeah, what are your great successes that you want to share, um, especially during COVID? What's working for you? And let's learn from each other. Uh, what have you found effective from other campaigns that you've seen that you know you would like to implement possibly this year or in the future? And uh, also, this is a space to um, talk about any support um, that you may or may not need. Um, we did hear, you know, some great feedback from that survey, um, and so uh, we'll ho we're hoping to continue that feedback loop with you all. So, opening the floor to um, everyone else. Uh, 
uh, well, I'll go first. <laughs> so we do, uh, as I said, the light up city hall with a DV walk. Um, so that creates a lot of, um, you know, that's also good for media and everything because it's at city hall. The Clos Sciences is quite large. Um, we do the Purple Thursday. We ask everybody in the office to come in purple. Everybody sends, especially with COVID, when people are working from home, they would just send me photos of them in purple. I post them throughout the day. Um, we also have our major fundraiser in October. So it's a crazy month. I have to say it's a little busy. Uh, but this year, it's on October 1st. So at least that will be out of the way before the rest of October hits. And uh, it's been good for us to do it in October around Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And for fundraising, it makes a lot of sense, right? People understand why we do it in uh, in October. Um, so those are... I can go. Um, so in the past, we've done candlelight vigils and um, the clothesline project. We haven't done it for two years, obviously, because of COVID. Um, I just recently applied for the permit to hold the event. And right now it's tentatively scheduled for October 20th. Um, we are inviting, I believe over close to 40 agencies to help set up information tables and participate in the event. Um, I was actually able to give the information to the district attorney um, in person last night because we were at a presentation he was at. So um, hoping that it's huge. I got a couple of questions um, uh, through the direct message chats about the coffee sleeves. So I don't think I can share my screen, but I sent the image earlier um, in the chat. Um, and um, we're building futures in, we're over here in San Leandro Ohlone land. I'm gonna send the image again in the chat. And um, it was interesting because we were on one of these webinars a couple of years ago, and then we, um, somebody did the coffee sleeves and we're like oh that's something easy we can do and it was actually really good because during COVID people were still buying coffee and it was really easy for us to be able to go and take a box of coffee sleeves it was a little time intensive intensive because we had to go to the coffee shop like make sure that they had our sleeves there and then they forgot and then they had this they had you know they're they're kind of like swamped at their thing but what we did kind of in exchange for them was that we sent out an e-blast to everybody and um, we did some Facebook posts and it kind of like encourages their business, like it, um, you know, does some marketing for their business, showing that they're doing good things in the community. Um, we did have a flop for one of the new, one of the new coffee shops said they were going to do it and then they stopped communicating with us and then they were like, oh, actually we can't do it. And by then we had already like promoted their business. So that kind of was unfortunate, but um but the coffee sleeves were really good in that sense. And then um, we this year we did a um, we got a QR code uh, put on it too, um, and so that just goes to our general um, website, uh, domestic violence website information. And the hardest part was like, what's the copy? What are we going to put on there? You know. So basically, it says raise awareness. Everyone deserves a respectful and healthy relationship. Connect and learn. Facebook our crisis line. And then, um, you know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, love is respect, hashtag DVAM. Uh, so, um, so that, that was, that was, that was good. And then one of the, um, and then one of the things that we learned also was that there was one that was like brown and there was one that was like kind of waffly. And when we printed on it, it was hard to see. It was hard to see the purple and hard to see the colors and the wording and stuff. Um, we use hot shot coffee sleeves in um, Canada um, because they were just really easy to work with. And um, and um, they got us stuff, I think like a two or three week turnaround. Um, 
And we ordered 10,000 and are doing it with three different coffee shops, including a Starbucks, which I was surprised because they have their own branding, but they, um, they're down to do it with us. And then I had a question. One of the support that we would need is we're going to do a small event with like maybe 30 people or 50 people. We're going to invite the local city council. We're going to do it at a pizzeria that's nearby here. Um, and it's just our debound kind of awareness event. But I'm just kind of curious, like, what kind of activities or what kind of things besides it being a social can we be doing? Do other people do? You know, we're not going to do like tabling with the other agency, like one of the other uh, people on the webinar said. But I'm just curious, you know, um, what other people are doing. And then we did a bunch of other really cool stuff that um, like we did uh, with our staff, we painted rocks. And then at the at the DV shelter, we have, we do the quilt project still. Um, and then and we did the Purple Thursday. We also had a DV survivor that kind of reconnected with us that somebody went through our programs come and give a really beautiful moving speech about her experience. And she just published a book, Soyini is her name. Um, and we featured her in our annual report and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, so that was, um, that was, those are kind of some of the things that we were doing and kind of a question to the group about the events activity. Um, I had a question for everyone. I would say, um, our organization in particular has a disparity of reaching out across generations. Um, most of our donor base is 50 plus, And um, I feel like we have a huge lack of engagement from the youth in the area. Um, does anyone have any past ideas or suggestions or perhaps are running into the same issue on how to get more people um, integrated into your DBAM? We partnered with um, the school. They have a law, justice, and ethic pathways. And so we get a lot of participation that way through that program, maybe reaching out to some of the schools and seeing if there's like a, a club or something um, that could possibly help. We also have some connections with um, another club at one of the other schools and they participate quite a bit in our DVAM and uh, teen dating violence stuff. Okay, I have to ask Josita about um, your endeavor to try TikTok. Tell me more about that. I'd, I'd love to learn from you because we're not on that yet. Well, so I'm not the TikTok generation. So thank goodness we have a colleague who is uh, about half my age who is willing to um, start TikTok. And um, I think what we're trying to do is uh, really focus on the, you know, the short videos the, because that's where the engagement is, stuff that people are willing to share or people that... You know, raises awareness and that the, you know think about their own healthy relationships focus on teenagers healthy relationships those kind of things but i haven't i'm, I'm not sure yet i think they just started it and we have to see but we have so we have programs for youth but there's very few that participate it's just really hard to to get into into that but i think um it's two different things right are we reaching the young people to make sure that they're educated about healthy relationships or are we looking at a younger um, uh, donor base? Because we also have that the majority of our donors are older. 
So it's it's hard to to figure out a way to get the younger people involved as a donor. And I think that's what the lady said who brought it up. Yeah, Jacita, I completely agree with you. Um, our organization is a dual DV, SA, and homelessness uh, organization. So at the time when we started our TikTok, um, we had four preventionists. So they would all um, share a Google Doc on ideas, like say if it was SA month and getting ready for wearing teal and things like that and how they could advertise it best. Um, we've had mixed re results since we've had um, different preventionists uh, leave in and, and come through. Um, so the last couple of months hasn't been as um, high of views, but um, I would say our average view rate is 700. Um, I will post our TikTok in the chat so you can kind of get an idea of the things our SA team was posting and what was successful and what was less viewed. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to send it over to my my TikTok colleague. I also want to circle back to Anna's question about events. Are there any other interesting events that folks are putting on or ideas that you've been mulling? One cool idea I saw a couple of years ago um, was that someone got a muralist to paint something on um, a wall that people could take photos in front of. So I think um, it was Purple Wings. Um, and the idea was that they would post about DV or the wall said something about um, love is respect and healthy relationships. And people were posting that on their social media. Okay, that, yeah, that kind of reminds me along that same vein of um, having like art in public spaces. Um, I've heard from some folks that they've had like library displays um, or in their city hall, they've worked with the, the folks who, you know, reserve building space and have had a display there as well. Oh, Katie, I like yours. Working with a local newspaper to change the front page to purple. Uh, have you been able to get them to do that? <laughs> yeah, we spoke with them um, earlier this month and they are agreeable to doing that. So um, we'll be working with that when we turn in our, uh, we usually do a DV um, newsletter for like, you know, the whole month. Um, and then I'll probably want to do like a special DV um, topic that we could do for purple day and maybe have them change it for purple day which is actually a thursday when the when the um, papers go out i'm uh, mountain christ services in mariposa california so we're a very small small town Um, another thing that we're doing, this is specifically just for our survivors. Um, I came up with an idea to have um, either staff or friends of Mountain Crisis, which is just a group of ladies that get together 
and kind of help with fundraisers, um, donate different things, and we put it all into a basket and then provide it to our survivors. So if they come in and they do like a survey um, of ours, uh, then they are entered into a raffle for this basket. So like in the basket, we'll have like a t-shirt and amethyst stone, um, some gift cards around the community, um, something along the lines where we're showing our appreciation to them as well, um, just to kind of give back because we've had a lot of fires that have happened in our community a lot of devastation. So we were trying to find something to give back to our survivors. And that was kind of something we came up with as well. Has any organization um, specifically created merch for DVAM and how successful would you say that is or just running um, a merch store in general for your organization year round if that's been more of a hassle than it's worth for the funds or if it's proven to um, kind of get more known in the community. For Mountain Crisis we're doing a t-shirt fundraiser so um we're going to be developing a t-shirt and kind of utilize the hashtags from the um, toolkit. But essentially we work with our local agency who happens to be our sister agency, Pathos, where they actually create the t-shirts. And then from there, people can buy those t-shirts during the whole month of October. Um, other than that, I don't have a merchandise uh, website year round. We're just such a small community a small um, agency, but that is something that we've done last year, which was really successful. So we're doing it again this year. We have items throughout the year that we just keep in stock. So we have a pen with our crisis line on it. And um, we have the um, love is respect um, bracelets. And if you turn around underneath, um, it's imprinted as our crisis line with no ink color. So it's kind of like, you can't really tell. Um, but that way somebody can wear it and always have the crisis line handy. Um, and we have a little um, a little sticker that says love is respect with our website also, a little one by one, things like that. The purple ribbon pins too. I have a question, uh, and this kind of made me think because we're having a video on um, kind of individual transformative actions people can take to prevent homelessness. And one of the things that um, the, the survivor featured is going to be talking about is getting to know your neighbors, right? The importance of building those relationships over time. Um, if you're in the laundry room, right? You know, just th things where you can really make sure that you're known to each other. Um, I wonder, have organizations been able to build like good relationships with um, apartment complexes and or think think through like, oh, you know, would they be willing to to post like a magnet um, on, you know, their, um, what you call it, on their washers or dryers or, you know, in their common spaces or things like that. Hmm. Public restrooms for posters. Yeah, that's funny. I've heard of that too, having the little tear offs in public restrooms. What else did Miranda say? We cut out a huge ribbon on plywood that was purple on one side and teal on the other. We took it to awareness events with Sharpies for folks to add messages. Poor survivors, volunteers built a stand for mounting. Oh, cool. Oh, thanks, Miranda. 
Yeah, um, Miranda, I wonder if you could speak to that. Like, I don't know, I feel like there's some gatekeeping with even building relationships with apartment complexes because they may not want to acknowledge that DV exists. Yeah, initially when I did it, I was just going rogue because I was, <laughs> I lived in the apartment complex and was hearing violence happening. So I started just putting tear offs in each of the laundry rooms. Um, it's like, hey, I feel like this is needed. And then I, they were sometimes getting ripped down the whole thing. So I went to management and was like, hey, so this is what I do for a living. And this is, um, you know, something that we can offer for residents to have, you know, just some awareness where it's not going to be super obtrusive and things like that. And they were very much in support of. Um, so I suspect it was somebody else that was tearing it down. Um, yeah, Kimmy, I absolutely, there's times that they haven't responded. And, and so I was the one that was like always in the office of, hey, so things are happening. Um, like, what are you doing for safety and resident safety? Um, but I started building a relationship that way. And then um, I just walked around to the different complexes because I lived across the street from the um, the university in the city I was in. So lots of apartment complexes and um, on days that I worked in Sherlock where I, you know, had some downtime was just kind of going to complexes and saying, hey, so this is something that we have available. Um, did you know that we have an, an agent, you know, there is a local program and we're housed, you know, we're right down the street in um, Turlock and also in Modesto. And so starting to build relationships that way to be able to get some of those flyers in. Some were definitely more receptive the, than others. Um, and when they say, oh yeah, we'll put this up. I'm like, ah, I live down the street, so I'm gonna check later. And sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. It was kind of hit or miss, but definitely once you had um, like those property managers who were engaged, they were usually like, hey, we've run out. Can you send me, like, can you just email it to me um, so that I can then be able to print them up myself? So we made them attractive and things like that. Um, some of them actually laminated the top and then they just were like doing the little tear off post-its. Um, but I was like, that's a lot of writing. Um, so yeah, it was, it was challenging, especially if there was turnover because then you have to rebuild the relationship, but it's not necessarily a bad thing um, to be able to go out and like, here's what some of those Here's what some of those rights are as as landlords. Here's what the rights are as tenants. And you know, would you be willing to share some of that data with you know some resources with tenants? Um, right. So okay, yeah, that's good. that's like a really interesting. Um, the way I'm thinking of it is like a case study, right? Like what happened when you tried? Like when you built good relationships with some other. There's like you know retention issues with others. Um, thank you. Thanks for explaining that. Um, I don't know how many organizations are near college campuses, but um, before I worked for the organization that I work for, I was attending UC Berkeley. And in one of the buildings that um, I had classes in, in their women's bathroom, um, they used to have, um, gosh, what are those called? Uh, where it's like the huge giant binder paper I can't think of the word on that but um they would attach it to the stall and so um when you closed yourself in it would appear and they would have questions like why do you think viol domestic violence rates are higher during this time or like things like that they would pose questions that you could fill out um in an almost secluded way um I don't know if they would just the organization would take those answers for their own program or if they would meet up afterwards and discuss. But I thought that was a great way, like, hey, you're already here, pose this question, you know, 
kind of get an idea of what students are feeling about certain things and you could address it in your programs or meet with them one or I should say pose a meeting time um, during the week. Um, typically most campuses, at least for UC Berkeley, had like a um, women's safety and BIPOC and queer building. Um, and a lot of organizations would work to have time slots there. Um, I could, you know, I would recommend posing that kind of question and then being like, if you are interested in learning more, discussing, we meet every Wednesday at one to two or something like that. I just thought that was um, really effective. I always saw that they were heavily filled out. And uh, to your point about local cafes, um, I know that when I was in Alaska, a lot of the public restrooms had flyers. Um, it was really pretty standard, whether you were on the islands or um, on the mainland, um, to see flyers that were in the bathrooms and to have like the resources. I had checked with some of my friends and they weren't really in the men's room, which I thought was odd. Um, I mean, I know all the reasons for that sometimes, but making sure that it's gonna be in all the bathrooms that there's information about um, domestic and sexual violence. Yeah, <laughs> definitely on the same path there. Um, but that was, I, in talking with some of the coalitions in Alaska, like they have found that that was pretty effective in terms of getting some um, traction. So um, I know there's also been work that folks have been doing around particularly on sexual assault with bars and talking with them about angel shots and, you know, like creating some pathways. I'll put a link to in the chat on that piece, um, but creating some pathways for people to ask for, ask for help without having to say, hey, I need help. To the point about salons, we had worked with some of the local um, salon training facilities in our area to do education for the stylists as they were going through the process to get licensed. Um, and then they would sometimes reach out to us of like, hey, we'd love to do haircuts for clients in the shelter and things like that. Um, so that was another way that we were able to build some relationships there. Hi, okay, so um, we will send out links, but here are some additional resources to maybe consider as you plan for your campaign. Um, the partnership has a resource library with a lot of um, past prevention peer network webinars um, about prevention messaging, establishing goals and objectives um, for prevention, um, social media management. Um, 
And then there's also um, the National Network to End Domestic Violence uh, Toolkit. Um, and then this year, their theme is everyone knows someone. It's the same theme as last year. Um, and um, it talks about how prevalent uh, DV is um, and how it's more than just physical violence. And then um, they also are having a week of action um, from October 17th to 23rd. Um, and I'll post these links in the chat. And then this was another one I found interesting from um, Strategic Prevention Solutions, which is an organization we work with um, frequently um, about how to increase virtual engagement. And it's a, um, a blog series. Yeah. Um, so if you have any questions, um, now's the time to ask. <laughs> I have a quick question. If somebody watches this webinar later on, will they see the stuff in the chat? We will be adding that to the resource library. So all of the resources and links that have been added, we'll make sure to include that in the resource library uploads so folks are able to see it. And then um, we can absolutely go through and, yeah, we can absolutely put the chat up. Um, I'll just convert it to a Word document for everyone to be able to access. Thank you for lifting that up. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, to Kimmy's point, private chats. So if you've sent any private chats to members of your team or to anybody on the, um, any of the facilitators, know that that's not going to be saved in that. Any other questions or things folks want to share? Kimmy, I know you put it in the chat. Do you want to go ahead and just do a plug for the call this Friday? Sure. Um, thanks so much. Yeah, this Friday, um, we uh, on the fourth Friday of every month, um, for those of you that aren't aware, we do our prevention peer network calls. And that link is great because you can register for one and then it's a recurring meeting on your calendar. So that way you don't have to keep registering every time, but our topics change. And so this Friday, we're doing a conversation about um, domestic violence and religious assumptions because a lot of people, um, you know, just like there are things that, you know, we come in with our own experiences, stuff we read in the news, but these are also spaces that even though there is harm to acknowledge, there also are great partnerships and collaborations and safe spaces that happen within religious institutions. And so it's to get that conversation started and to kind of keep a safe and reflective space for that. So that's going to be this Friday. Thank you. Oh, um, that's just additional, hi, Anna, uh, that's additional resources as you, um, or as you plan your DVAM campaign. Um, and it's a whole series that they're putting on about um, engaging your audience with prevention. All right, um, so if you need help planning your campaign, want to chat with us, um, need some technical assistance or support, uh, feel free to contact us. And then here is our contact information. Thank you so much, everyone. So much. Oh, go ahead. oh, no, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> just to say I'm going to stop the